gonna do a quick video on some things that are important for people to know. Um, a lot of times I don't do, um, what do you call, um, DIY. I don't show the whole process all the time. Sometimes I come on camera specifically to give bits of information and sometimes there's a plethora of things that you can learn from through my experience and I think that helps people um, regardless if you're going to see the whole build or not and you're not going to see the whole build on this because there's a lot of stuff going on so first of all this is a condo and that's the reason that I titled it such because uh, condo situations are a lot different in a lot of ways which I'm going to try to enumerate some of those um, difficulties in building um, so I am actually I believe on the 19th floor of this building um, so what this was is a plastic what I call plastic a fiberglass tub shower combo that was taken out yesterday yesterday morning yeah that was taken out yesterday morning cut it up took it out to the dump or wherever they took it and um, this is what I ended up with this is all sheetrock on this back wall uh, you can see that it was glued in at the top and then this is where the shower ended up um, so there's a lot of stuff going on here and I don't want to take up too much time but I want to throw some things out there these are furring strips sometimes you're going to see one by two um, this is one by two or one by four or whatever it is but basically I'm taking uh, liquid nails and I'm putting it on the back of these boards and then I'm shooting inch and a half uh, I think they're inch and a half nails in there with what I call bang gun um, so you can look that up if you want and so now that I have all of this furring strip glued in here and stable onto this concrete wall I actually have something to screw my backer board into and then I went ahead and got some um, I think it's uh, I forget now half inch plywood and I cut those into six inch strips and then I glued those to the wall as well so that I have something for my liner to rest up against same as I would any other shower two by sixes so that's uh, two things hopefully that help you out this is aluminum mm, steel studding and steel studding is very very difficult to work with um, so for that reason alone I have retrofit some two by fours a two by four inside of here two by four inside of here and then if you come over to the niche we cut this joist out because it doesn't go on anything this is an open ceiling on the other side um, so we cut that um, that one out and that's going to be useless because I want something, I want wood and the only way to do it is kind of scab in where you can. I can't scab in over here so I have some self-tapping self screws like that that will go into there when I put my back board up. I'll put half a dozen along that side but then the rest of it I'll have wood, I'll have wood, I'll have wood I'm up on the top of over here so it just makes my life a lot easier. This was a little difficult, a little time consuming to get in because I had to put in some 2x4 back there at the bottom there to have something because I can't anchor anything to, yeah, a lot of difficulties. So I have enough room for my backer board on this side, enough room for my backer board on that side, and then same as here. I barely have enough room. There's about half an inch and my backer board is half an inch. In this case, I'm going to be using go board because it was a lot easier to bring up um, 19 floors. Anyway, uh, a couple of things here. I scabbed in some pieces again for my uh, wallboard to rest up against, but I'm a little bit off on here, which I can't help. And so I put in liquid nails, um, both on this side and the bottom. This will dry up um, fairly hard tomorrow, and then I'll be able to kind of sh mm, feather out some thin set on here. So thin set's gonna get feathered out here, gonna get feathered out here, all around the back of here. And I'll probably stick something back there because eventually I'm gonna use a Schluter material way over there, that orange curdy. That's gonna be my pan liner because I don't wanna deal with a, especially on this application, um, a rubber pan liner. So my, so my curdy will go all the way and it'll be pieced together, probably a six inch overlap and it will go all the way up and up to the top of this curb. I'm not going to take it all the way over. There's really no point. Everything's going to be waterproof. Um, in fact, even this curb is going to get some thin set on it prior to uh, putting the curdy on here because the curdy wants to stick to thin set. So I'm going to make that happen as well. This was a little more difficult because as you can see, I have 
a solid edge here and a solid edge on that side. And so I couldn't anchor anything in here. This piece here got anchored in by virtue of some liquid nails, some, some pieces of scrap wood that are all glued in to each other to kind of, yeah. You have to come up with, um, you have to think outside of the box. And when you're doing something like this in a condo situation, it is imperative that you come up with different ideas to make things happen. This scares the heck out of me. I think this building was built 12 years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I don't like CPVC because it gets brittle over time because of the chlorine and all the chemical reaction on the inside. And so this, before I ever do anything with this, is gonna, the water is gonna be shut down because I don't wanna break. Can you imagine water spewing out 19 floors down? Yeah. So um, I will definitely turn off this water and bleed everything out before I work on that. But that's gonna get a shower valve proper because it was a tub. And uh, it's a seven foot ceiling, so you know, that's good. I can actually touch the ceiling, which I can never do normally. All right, so now we get to this uh, drain contraption. So the customer actually wanted the drain to be center, and so do I. On most applications on a concrete slab, I can do that. Tall buildings have what they're called tension wires, and the tension wires go from the end of the building, and I'm just pointing as if this is where the building, from the end of the building to the end of the building, and they have clamps on them and they're tightened down and all that stuff, and the concrete is poured into those tension wires. And so a building, especially this size, is definitely gonna have tension wires, which I don't want to get into. So I can't knock out all this concrete like I normally would on a slab construction and get the drain center. I would like to, but I can't. This is uh, one of those anomalies you have to work around. Um, so when the tub was here, I just sheared off as far as I can go. And as you can see, I think there's a three inch pipe that surrounds that and then it's embedded into concrete. So I can't get any more depth on this pipe anyway. And because we couldn't do a center drain, he has a big square drain that he wants in here. And we couldn't put the square drain there because it wouldn't fit. So we decided to go with a linear drain, and the linear drain is right here. But we have some issues trying to get, we can't bump it out because by the time you put in a 90 and another 90 to bump it out from the wall, you have no room for the drain to go in because this drain is speci specifically used with a three-piece drain kit, right? Which I have in my hand right now but it has been sheared off on the side because it has to be in order for it to fit. And it, and it doesn't quite fit. There's about half an inch of room along here. So inevitably, oh, another thing too. I had to kind of fashion this out on my own. So this is a hub. This is a two inch um, to inch and a half hub with a connector on it, but the connector had too much height. So I sheared off both ends of this connector in order to reduce the height because I needed about another half an inch. So from those two shear parts that I sheared off with a saw, I was able to get the correct height. And then this hub well, the connector goes on to there. It's gonna get glued on here as soon as I come off the camera. And then you have the hub for the two inch drain kit. And this is not what I like doing and that's all gonna get glued in. This hub comes with the drain and it actually screws into this two inch hole because it has the male threads and it has an O-ring in here, a very thin O-ring to make it watertight, which fits right into there. So that slides right into there and the O-ring makes it watertight. I've never trusted that little O-ring. Well, so my car ran out of memory, so it gave me an opportunity uh, to push uh, the drain firmly into uh, to the three-piece drain. And so the legs are definitely bottomed out. I don't know if you can see. And so that's how I've configured it. And it's gonna work. And if you can see, I have about half an inch of room. So my wall board is gonna be pushed right up against the drain, which I don't like. I would like another half an inch of room, but I cannot get it, it's impossible. So inevitably the tile will end up sitting on the edge of the drain which is okay. There's a little wiggle room. There's probably about a quarter of an inch wiggle room on the drain itself. This is gonna be a tileable drain. Um, I don't know where it's at right now. 
So the tileable drain cap uh, grate, as it were, is gonna go on the top, although it's not a grate because it's tileable. So it's gonna have about quarter inch room all the way around where my tile won't interfere with taking that drain out if need be. And that's the best I can do. There is really no other way because you know you don't know what you don't know until you know it. And in this case, I just had to kind of like come up with solutions to all the various problems. And I'm gonna go forward with <laughs> coming up with solutions to various problems because if you can see this anchoring that they have on, I just really don't like steel studying at all. The anchoring is really crappy. Um, but it has the same anchoring on the top with this bar. I'm not going to be able to do that, so inevitably I'm going to put some wood scabbing in here so that when I do put my valve here, then I'm able to, yeah, have a normal anchoring process going on because um, the, it, everything in here is very problematic. And so the solutions kind of come at you the way they come at you. We're about an inch off. You can see I put 16 there, so from the wall there to 16 from the wall there at 17. But the great thing is I'm putting a contiguous curb top, which is six inches, and then he wants it flush. So I'll have backer board on the outside of my curb, two sheets of backer board on the inside of my curb, which will take that down to 16 and a half, which is lovely. So we'll only be about half an inch off center at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, you gotta come up with solutions. You're not gonna, <laughs> especially the way I configured this drain, with those uh, double hugs going on and all this stuff, you're not gonna read that in a book. You just gotta go to Home Depot and get a bunch of parts and start trying to figure it out on your own because because usually you've got three or four different solutions and in this case, in a condo, there, there there's only gonna be one in this case. There's, there's not a possibility to have, I mean, you could argue the point and say, well, you could put a normal uh, commercial drain in there, but still, you know, you're relegated to one end and a commercial drain is going to be typically round or square and it wouldn't fit on there anyway because you're so far up against the wall. So those are some of the anomalies, anomalies, anomalies that I ran into doing this job. And I may or may not come back on camera if I run into some more issues. By the way, that hole, just like any other application in any place that I do concrete slab with a tub, there's going to be a boxed hole, although usually you're looking at dirt that's going to get filled in with concrete and the concrete will go flush with up up against this drain here um, the whole thing is going to get the curdy and it's going to be red guarded at least this whole bottom is going to get red guarded because yes i trust curdy but i have red guard so i'm going to use it once that's done i'll be able to pour my shower pan screed all the way down to the edge of the drain just shy of the edge of the drain because i need tile to go up against there and that's it that's how this is going to get done it's going to look awesome from what it actually was, but it's just taking time to get there. Um, I anticipate probably another six days on this job, at least, maybe seven, but it'll be awesome. So if any of my tricks helped you, oh yeah, I had to take off some of this tile because we extended the shower out. So I knocked off some of these tile and that one came loose. I'll put that back um, in order to extend it out and get my curbs. Also the bang gun, that's how you're going to get your curb bottom into the concrete. Um, I think there were two and a half inch nails that I used and I used probably six, no, probably eight of them. A couple down at the end, a couple down at the end, a couple in the middle, and then I think one here and one there. That's the bottom curb, but I also put liquid nails on it prior to hitting it into the concrete. And then my next one is just going with screws. So that's it. Hopefully something here helped you if you're going to do a condo renovation. I don't envy you. I don't want to be you. And I don't want to be me at this point, honestly, because like right now, I should have already poured the pan. <laughs> Once I got all this done, day one, I'm usually trying to pour the pan and, you know, give it some time to uh, dry out. But I'm relegated to pouring it today, late today, and um, I'll be ready to start doing tile two days from now. here to get information on this condo that I've already talked about all this other stuff blah 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 um, the next step of the next process that I went through yesterday is screening out thin set onto my boards I want some I want the thin set that I'm going to put the curdy onto I want that to stick really well so I'd rather have thin set preset on that and dried out prior to putting my curdy down and I'm going to get to that in just a second um, 
the box was already filled in with concrete last night. Um, and then um, I think it was a couple hours later, this is fascinating concrete. Then I screeded out some thin set around there. There was a it was slightly higher, so I just kind of feathered out some thin set around there. No real reason to do that. I just like that smoothness because again, I'm putting curdy on there. So it's imperative that I have as smooth a surface as possible. Um, the thin set got screeded onto uh, the curb, only on the inside. Um, didn't feel it was necessary to do it on the top because uh, eventually, like I said, I'm gonna have um, thin set that's gonna wrap around to the top of that. It's not gonna go outside. Um, more than likely, I'll red guard the outside just for kicks and giggles, but um, because I'm using go board, there's no problem at all putting the board into the pan. It's not gonna wick up water. I'm not concerned about water getting up and over the way I would with a um, normal type of setup. Anyway, I um, did my plumbing of my valve, but I have the transitioned copper and I don't have my cutters, the nice smooth PVC cutters that I like so much. So I gotta go to Home Depot and get those so that I can make that nice and neat. Um, other than that, Oh, and then I put the nipple on because we're going to have a hose connection. And so that part will actually go there. And then the hose will go probably attached to this side here. Just kind of a wraparound thing because we're limited on room here. So that's what's going on. Now, to the curry. There are two sheets here that are going to overlap. Where they overlap is either going to be 6, 8, 10 inches. I don't know yet because I need to bring it up a little bit past there and a little bit past there. So wherever that transition happens to be, it'll probably be mm, at least six to 10 inches. The overlap will get um, glued in with thin set as they talk about. The thin set will go all the way over here, um, very thin layer of thin set just to glue that down with a small notch trowel. And yeah, once that's done, and the corners will get folded and all that stuff. Once that's done um, and it dries for a little bit, I'll put some red guard over the seam. Um, I'll, yeah, I'll red guard over the seam. I don't trust thin set to be a waterproofer. Although I trust the material, I don't trust what they use for it, which is thin set. And so at that point, um, it's just a matter of a little bit of dry time, a couple hours of dry time for the thin set to set for the curry, and then I'll be able to pour my pan. Um, I'm gonna fashion my curry same as I would with a uh, traditional pan liner, a PVC pan liner. So where's my grain at? So yeah, so my grain, <sighs> This is that piece I was telling you about that I cut. My drain is gonna go over the curdy. There's gonna be a little X cut out over here. And then I'm gonna push this down there, same as I would any other pan. Those four flaps will go positively down into the drain. I will put the four bolts on, same as I would any other liner. And then eventually my drain will just slide right into there. Um, and then of course, once the pan is poured, everything will get red guarded and there'll be a bead of silicone, um, the entire parameter of the drain. So that's where I'm at right now. If any of that helped, yay, <laughs> I've done my job because it's information that I'm just trying to put out there. You know, sometimes the process is difficult for me to show and this is not kind of a DIY, let me put on fast speed and all that stuff. Although I've done a few of those, mostly it's little, nuggets of information that somebody comes on and goes, oh, that's exactly what I need. That's what, exactly the information I need. And that's the reason I put the video. So I will move forward and come back at a later date. Right, I'm into day three, and I wanna go over just a couple of brief things here. Yesterday I poured the pan. I used Setcrete. Setcrete is a great mortar. Home, um, Lowe's sells Setcrete, I love it. The aggregate is larger, the sand particles are larger. It just screeds out a lot easier. Um, so I had a little bit of a low spot running along that back end. Um, and then I had a little bit of a low spot going up to the drain over here. So I put thin set in there to kind of take up the difference. Also, I put thin set around the perimeter as I do all of my showers because the red guard will stick to that thin set a whole lot better than, than the mortar mix. Not that it doesn't, it's just I found that yeah, it sticks a lot better. So on this back end over here of the drain, um, it, because I'm so close against the wall, and you probably won't run into this if you're gonna do a condo type situation. Mm, I don't know if you will or not, but so I put in some caulking. I put in, well, there's mortar back in the back of it, almost up to the level, but my backer board is gonna set right on top of that. And because of that, I want that also to be waterproof. So 
I can't get in there small enough with red guards, so I just used some silicone, some white silicone, and ran a bead um, of silicone there. So um, now that everything is drying up, and you see where my seams came together with my with my curve, same as over here. So I red guarded the outside of the curve. Probably not necessary, but I did it anyway. And that's about it. Um, did the plumbing yesterday, and so the retrofit. I don't like sharp bites in a wall, but unfortunately where I'm at, I'm not able to get the connectors. There's a specific connector with a male and a, yeah. Um, so I couldn't get that with a CPVC. So I'm not concerned about a sharp bite. Mm, shouldn't be covered up in a wall. But then again, we have this back wall over here. So if the homeowner wants to, they can put a panel on the back wall. So this is to let all this stuff dry a couple, two or three, four hours. And then I will red guard this entire area put my backer board up and I will be at a point where everything is prepped and ready to start tiling tomorrow, day four. And this is the final phase. All my backer is up. Of course it's go board, so it's foam. So I was able to put it right down on the pan. Um, I ran some caulking. Well, I went through a couple of tubes of caulking because that's what GoBoard wants you to do. Between the seams, there's caulking. All the fasteners, there's caulking. And then all the corners as well as the bottom, there's caulking. Um, I did use a little sheetrock mud to feather out some of my inconsistencies that I had going on. So eventually I'll put red guard um, on that area. Also this area where I feathered out some mud. Um, so that will get some red guard and then it'll be 100% waterproof before any tile is put on. This is a second coat, might be the third coat on the floor of um, Red Guard. So it's completely 100% waterproof. I doubled up on my backer board on the inside because my customer wants the six inch curb top to be flush on both sides. So now it is firmly five, uh, five inches. So it gives me half an inch playroom on both sides for my tile. And that's it, that is all the prep. There's my shower valve. I have the perimeter of, parameter of my mud guard for my tile. That's adjustable somewhat. I have a couple of screws anchoring that in. And there is a nipple for the wand feature that's gonna go on there as well. Um, so that's all the prep. It's it now going forward is the same as any other job, but everything prior to that with a condo uh, shower, this, and then I'm so far up too, so all my tools and equipment have to be brought up here one boatload at a time it's a real hassle but today after this is all dried and everything probably in about three hours or so i will start setting tile on my floor my floor tile will go first onto the floor and then eventually i'll go yeah what i might do is i might i have ledger boards here i might go ahead and start a couple two or three rows of tile going up the wall first and then at the end of the day do my floor tile so that tomorrow all I have to do is grout the floor tile put something to cover that tile as I work up on the wall so this is about two days of tiling as opposed to <laughs> the four or five days of prep that I've had to go through so hopefully that helps somebody uh, again the biggest issues here are the steel beams uh, metal beams, aluminum beams, whatever you want to call them. That's the biggest issue here, plus the plumbing is a big issue. Um, so those two things alone cause me a lot of angst on this uh, job to get it done, or to get the prep done in a proper amount of time. So that's what I have to say on this. Finito, yes. It's been uh, about a week. It took me um, probably, actually this is day eight. Eight? Yeah, I think it's day eight. It would probably be a little less than that if this was not the type of construction that it is. Um, ran into, yeah, some issues. Um, so there are some things that I, I don't quite like about this. I don't like, you know, the four and a half inches at the top. It's not quite the sliver cut. But then again, this isn't quite an eight foot ceiling either. I mean, it's very unusual. It makes me feel tall though. Um, so I don't like that. A um, couple of other things. I don't like that the, that the valve isn't center. Um, it's not center of the wall because we bumped it out. I think it was another six inches or so that we bumped out. Um, so I don't quite like that. But again, with the type of construction that I'm dealing with, um, 
you know, you don't really have a choice. Um, I gave an option. I did put a stud, a uh, sister to stud up to one of the steel studs and I gave an option to put the hose well on the left side and have it come and he didn't want to do that. So that's why it's over there in case you were wondering, but it's looking very nice. And we got a niche in here, which um, we didn't know if we could do or not. This is a solid concrete wall. And this is the wall that I usually like to have my niches on, you know, about 30 inches or so, a little less than that, about 26, 28 inches. Um, so we could not do it there. He did not want it over here, so that's where it ended up. And yeah, it took a little bit of a little bit of uh, finagling around these steel studs and scrubbing in, scabbing in some wood to make that happen. But it turned out nice. And then we have the, the same color sluger on the sides and the contiguous curb top, which he actually picked up from Atlanta before he came out here. Um, so that's it. Um, it's looking better than I thought it would, not because of my work, but because of the type of tile and stuff he chose. So the linear drain is what we had to do by default. We couldn't do any other drain because of the issues that I ran into, again, that has to do with this type of construction. Um, so we just kind of made it up as we went. Um, and it's a 28 inch drain, which is not center. It's a little bit wider over there than it is over there, but again, because we bumped out the shower a little bit. Um, and then we just did a large format, two pieces on the top of the drain. Uh, linear drains are not meant for this type of tile because you can't really edge it off. There's no way to edge off a mosaic tile to make it look nice. Um, it's really meant, honestly, for, uh, for something a large format or even a four by four, two by two on a mat or something like that. This is a little more difficult uh, to get into to make that happen. But, oh, and then also because of the finite area where the drain came up, I had to overlap my wall tile onto the back, mm, I don't know, three quarter of an inch of that drain. Um, and there's a good little gap there. So you can kind of canter lever the drain out and up and out if you need to take it out. Um, so a lot of things are just kind of made up, as, <laughs> not made up, things have to happen the way they happen sometimes, like you don't have a choice in the matter, and so that's what this amounted to. It, it wasn't the entire plan that we had, but it turned out good regardless, and so, you know, I'm happy with it, homeowner's happy with it, and so I'm out of here, I'm glad this is over, I have another one to do next door in fact that bathroom that shower over there i'm going to be doing it in about a month month and a half so i'm coming back to florida to do that um i think i think as it stands now yes i'll be back and so that's it that's all i have to say hey if you enjoyed that video and you learned something consider being a patreon member Five, ten, fifteen dollars a month would help me greatly produce more videos. I make nothing up from YouTube at all. If you're gonna call me for advice, please donate fifty dollars for thirty minutes. My link to my PayPal and my Patreon account is down below. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get immediate notifications as soon as I post a video. And thank you very much for your support.